So what we're going to do in today's 15 minute fundamentals session for SAP Business One is we're going to take a look at the basics of budgeting. So a couple of things to bear in mind as we get started and we're looking at the budgeting functionality in Business One. Budgeting is tied specifically to the financials module. So it's tied to the general ledger. You can set budgets at the chart of accounts level, but that's it. So when you think about the accounts that you've set up for your revenue, for your expenses, that's where you are setting your budgets. What that allows you to then do is when you are creating transactions and you are processing your um, accounts payable transactions, for example, uh, against your expense accounts, the system can go ahead and look at that expense account, look at the budget, and then see whether or not that transaction is going to exceed the budget and give you a warning. Another example is if you're creating purchase orders, a little bit more applicable because you want to not close the gate after the horse is bolted. Um, you want to capture it before you actually exceed your budget. So when you're putting in your purchase order, it can compare the value of the purchase order against the account that you specified and see if you've actually got enough money in the budget uh, for that purchase order to go ahead and be processed but then if you don't it can go and push out uh, an approval process and you can get your um, you can get your purchase order approved so it's going to exceed the budget or if it's within a certain tolerance all right but what you can't do is you can't go in and set budgets against your business partners you can't say for example I want to set a sales budget for this customer or I want to set an overall purchasing budget for this um, for this supplier Having said that, um, with a little bit of creativity, using some user-defined fields uh, and crystal reports, you can actually start to get some fairly basic budgeting at that level. And there are, of course, additional complementary solutions that will help you address those, uh, those areas of budgeting in more detail. But fundamentally, we're going to talk about the, the, the baseline capability in SAP Business One in the Financials module. So what do you need to do? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that your budgeting is switched on. So you'll go into System Initialization, you'll go into General Settings. And you'll come in here and you'll see you've got your budget option. Now if this isn't switched on, you're going to switch on your budget initialization and then you're going to specify, alright, when I'm setting my budgets, do I want to block any deviation from the budget at all? So if, if a transaction is going to make an account exceed its budget, it's just going to block the transaction completely probably a little bit too extreme I would say. The next and more sensible option for my money is to set a warning. So you could say do I want to warn based on the monthly or the annual budget and which of these transactions am I interested in looking at and doing the warnings against. Then of course you could do it without warning which in that case you can basically exceed your budget and Business One isn't going to tell you uh, about that until of course you do your financials um, reporting and you do your budget versus actual and you see wow you know my budget was ten thousand dollars and I've already spent fifteen thousand so it's kind of too late so that's why I always like this warning option now the thing to bear in mind as well this is my sample data so my budgets are already switched on but when you switch this on for the very first time it's going to ask you do you want to set all of your accounts as being relevant to budget so it's going to give you the ability then to set a budget against all of those accounts so you'll set that and then you'll say OK. So that's the basics done. Then you need to come in here into your financials and you go into your budget setup. Now this is where you've got um, a couple of different examples. You've got your budgets which are when you've created a set of numbers and you've locked those in stone. They become, uh, they become one of these budgets here and you can see I have um, these budgets and I can set them against these different budget scenarios. So I've got my main budget here for the 2018 fiscal year. But you'll see because I've got a quite a big um, amount of sample data here, I've got um, budget scenarios for previous years as well. So you can see I've got a 2017, 2016 and so on. And so what this budget scenario definition allows me to do is I can pick this budget. I can then nominate the accounts that I'm interested in looking at. And you'll see I nominate those just by using this um, selection function to either switch them on or off. 
and I can also get that down to an additional level of detail. So if I say down to detail level 10, it shows me all of the accounts underneath that. So I can get really, really specific with the accounts that I want to see. I'm going to block out all my asset accounts, for example, block out all my liability accounts block out all my equity accounts and now I'm only interested in seeing my revenue accounts so then I'll say OK and what it now does and I've maximized this just make it easier to look at it now brings me up a list of all of those accounts that I have now selected and um, it's only showing right now the accounts where I have set a budget alright so remember these are accounts where I've already created a budget now you're thinking, well, hang on, Richard, how did you actually go through that process of creating the budget? Well, I'm going to show you that in a second. All right, but this is what a budget scenario is. It is a set of these numbers uh, that you have created, and you can then now use that scenario in doing budget versus actual financial reports. All right, so let's take a look at that um, in a little bit more detail and look at the process of actually creating our budget scenarios. So I come in here into budget scenarios and you'll see, first thing it's gonna ask me, it's gonna ask me, well, what financial year are you looking at? So obviously we're in 2018, so that's the financial year I'm looking at and I've already got my main budget set. But let's say, for example, I now want to do some what-if scenarios. So I want to create um, a new budget. And I want to base this on a what-if scenario where if I'm saying, well, what if all of our income and all of our expenses increase by 20%? So what I can do in this budget scenario, I can come here and I can go to data and I can say add a row. And I'm going to create a new budget and I'm going to call this my optimistic budget. You can call it whatever you like. And the great thing about this as well is you can have as many different budget scenarios as you want with all kinds of different numbers in there so you can start doing those different what-if scenarios. But this is my optimistic budget. Now, when I'm creating this budget, I can create it on the basis of all of the other budgets that are in the system. So you'll see, when I click on my drop-down list here, it's going to give me the ability to choose um, my main budget so I can say yep I'm going to base this on my main budget and I'm going to put in here that it's based on a hundred and twenty percent increase on my main budget so I say yep that's fine and then I'll say update and that's now done and I've now got that new budget so if I come in here into budgets I can now pick not only my main budget for 2018 but I also now have my optimistic budget for 2018 so then if I open this up I click OK and it shows me all those numbers you'll now see I've got all of those figures that are in here now right now it's showing me the accounts that have got budgets but I can say display accounts with no budget as well because I might want to go in now and start adding additional budgets against some of these other accounts. So what I can now do is come in here and start getting really, really specific. So right now I haven't been budgeting for revenue, but I'm going to assume that I'm going to budget for revenue. And I am going to say, well, I'm going to assume that I'm going to have a million dollars in revenue. Okay, now you're probably sitting there going, hang on, revenue, isn't that a credit account? And you're absolutely right. So that should go across here in the credit column. And so I put in $1 million in sales revenue, and that's in there. Now, right now, um, that's going to be split in 12 because I'm using 12 monthly periods in my chart of, in my uh, financials right now it's going to be split across 12 equal uh, amounts across those 12 months but what I can do is I can go in here into this method and when I click on the drop down list it shows me a couple of different ways that I can do this. I can allocate it in um, ascending order across my financial periods, in a descending series. I can define a new mechanism for allocating that budget, or I can go in here and I can say manual, 
And when I say manual and I double click on the row, it now opens up the full 12 months and I can now go in here and I can say, all right, I want to, um, you know, now split this manually across each of those months. So I can say, you know what, in the first month of the year, I think I'm gonna, gonna get $200,000 worth of revenue. And then in this month, I'm gonna get 50,000 and so on and so forth. All right, now of course, I have to take this 1 million out of December, zero that out, because otherwise my budget's gonna be out of balance. But you'll see what it's now doing is it's giving me a running total of how much I've still yet, let, yet to allocate. So what I can do is I can click on this period here, for example, and I can say update differences, um, and then it's automatically going to put the remainder against this bottom period, all right? So again, what this is doing, it's giving you a lot of flexibility as to how you split up the money across your budgets. Now, the thing to bear in mind as well is you might be looking at this thinking, well, gee, that looks really manual. I'd really like to be able to just put my budgets into an Excel spreadsheet and import them in. Well, don't worry, you can actually do that with SAP Business One as well. But for now, we're just talking about this core functionality of punching in your budget numbers. And then when you've agreed on how you want it to be, you can just hit the update option and then say OK. And then that budget amount is now allocated um, correctly as per your manual split. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. You've got all of those numbers there. You can go through, you can put those budgets in, and then when you've finished, you can hit update. Your budget is now updated, and you're now ready to go. So that's your optimistic budget set. And of course, you can go and do the same thing. You can go and build a pessimistic budget where you can say, well, what if the budget, if the revenue numbers drop by 20%? You've got that same capability. Now, just a quick point uh, before we wrap up on this idea of budget distribution methods. All right, so we've talked about our budgets. We've talked about our budget scenarios for doing our what ifs, but we've also got these budget distribution methods. So what the budget distribution methods allow you to do um, is it allows you to create uh, these different ways of splitting your revenue across the different periods. So you can see right now we've got these three different methods that are set up. We've got equal, ascending order, and descending series. So for example, if I look at equal, you'll see I've got my 12 months and each month has an equal weighting factor. All right. I can then go in here again and I can look at my budget distribution methods and I'll pick another one. Let's look at our ascending order. So what we've done is we've said, all right, we're going to use these different factors um, and we're going to utilize these factors to split the budget according to this ratio um, across the entire 12 month period. And then let's take a look at our final, which is our descending series. So again, same idea here, it's just the same, but it's actually in descending. So you're spending more, or you're allocating a greater amount of your budget in the first month, and then that is decreasing as you go through the year. So you've got a whole range of different ways that you can do this, and you can create your own budget distribution methods as well. So that's it, that's a little bit of an overview of budgets. What we'll do is we'll actually, what we'll do is we'll look at the process of reporting on the budgets when we look at our financial reports.